What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Dogon people of Mali. <laughs> And as always, if you want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and home team merchandise are in the description box below. According to oral tradition, the Dogon were originally members of the Kita family, a Mande-speaking group from the Niger River who fled their homes sometime between the 10th and the 13th centuries because they refused to convert to Islam. The oral tradition may show that the Dogon absorbed Mande-speaking refugees from the centralized Islamic kingdoms of the Niger Basin. However, the Voltaic or Gur language of the Dogon suggests a more ancient presence in their present-day homeland in south-central Mali. They inhabit the rugged and isolated Bandigara escarpment and surrounding regions southwest of the Niger Ben. The cliffs at the edge of the escarpment protected the Dogon from outside invaders. Dogon settlements concentrate around isolated pockets of arable land, where they farm millet as a subsistence crop. Traditionally, the Dogon have shared this territory with the Fulani, who exchange their dairy products for Dogon grain and produce. Their rugged and isolated territory left them relatively unaffected by French colonialism and missionary work. By maintaining their pre-colonial cultural traditions and customs, the Dogon have attracted the attention of numerous ethnographers, including the French anthropologist Marcel Gruyal and the French ethnographic filmmaker Jean Roche. In recent years, however, the Dogon have increased their participation in the cash economy. Some villages have specialized in traditional crafts and performances in order to attract commercial tourism. Some Dogon have even left their homeland in search of wage labor, particularly in Bamako, Mali, and the mines of Cote d'Ivoire. Unfortunately, the Dogon have also recently faced animosity from their Fulani neighbors, with whom they compete for scarce mineral resources and mining jobs. A Hogan, or headman, traditionally the oldest man in the area, provides spiritual leadership. He performs rituals and safeguards the religious mask for which the Dogon are famous. The Dogon fall into at least four smaller groups, the Dayan, Aru, Onan, and Dumno. Unlike their Muslim neighbors, most Dogon still practice a traditional religion with a complex mythology. This has received considerable anthropological attention. Dogon cosmology considers every being a combination of complementary opposites. Elaborate rituals are necessary to maintain this balance. Ancestor worship is another important facet of Dogon religion. Members of the Society of Mask perform rituals to guarantee that a person's life force will flee from his or her corpse to a future relative of the same lineage. One of the most famous Dogon rituals is the Sigi, a series of rituals performed once every 60 years, recorded by filmmaker Jean Roche. Islamic missionaries, however, have had some success among the Dogon, and approximately 35% of the Dogon population are now Muslim. Much of Dogon art consists of ritual masks made with carved wood and other materials. Dogon architecture conveys symbolic relationships in Dogon society and is considered one of the most distinctive styles in West Africa. When the Dogon arrived at the Bandiagara escarpment, they found architecture and other remains of earlier civilizations, among these the Tolo and the Telum. Dogon villages are constructed to resemble a human body. At the head of the village is a blacksmith's shop and a toguna, a community men's house. The toguna is an open walled structure with roof supports carved in human shapes, often the female form. Typically the toguna has eight such supports, with the number representing the first eight Dogon ancestors who sat in a ruling council. Today, these ancestors impart wisdom and spiritual knowledge to Dogon elders when they meet in the toguna to discuss village affairs. In the Dogon religion, Ama is a supreme creator god. The efforts of Ama initiated the formation of the universe, the creation of matter, and the process of biological reproduction. 
The notion of a creator god named Ama or Amen is one that is not unique to the Dogon people, but can also be found in the religious tradition of other West African and North African groups. Like other important Dogon cosmological keywords, the word Ama carries with it more than one level of meaning in the Dogon language. From one perspective, it can refer to the hidden god of the Dogon, and yet from another perspective, it can mean to grasp, to hold firm, or to establish. Among the Dogon, Ama is thought of as the god who holds the world firmly between his or her two hands, and to speak the name Ama is to entreat him or her to continue to hold it. Although commonly referred to as male, Ama is considered to symbolize both male and female principles, and as a result, is more properly characterized as genderless or as being of dual gender. This dual aspect of Ama's character is consistent with the broader cosmological principles of duality and the pairing of opposites that are expressed symbolically in all facets of Dogon religion and culture. It's also consistent with the male and female aspects of biological reproduction that Ama symbolizes. The Dogon religion is characterized as an esoteric tradition, one that involves both public and private aspects. Although Ama could be said to embody great creative potential, he or she is in fact considered by the knowledgeable Dogon priests to be small, so small as to be effectively hidden from view. Although this detail of Ama's character is generally not spoken of in public among the Dogon. This perceived smallness of Ama is consonant with the instrumental role that he or she is said to play in the mythological processes of the formation of matter and of biological reproduction. Perhaps the first important creation of the Dogon god Ama was an unformed universe, a body that is said to have held all the potential seeds or signs of future existence. The Dogon referred to this body as Ama's egg. Now, it's actually been noted by respected researchers of Dogon myth, such as historian Nicholas Grimmel in his book, A History of Ancient Egypt, that there are likely symbolic parallels between key Dogon mythological characters and those of ancient Egypt. For instance, it can be argued that Ama is a likely counterpart to the Egyptian hidden god, Amen, much as attributes of the jackal of the Dogon myths present clear parallels to the jackal god, of the Egyptian underworld. Likewise, comparisons can be made between the Egyptian god Sab or Anpu, who acts as judge between good and evil, and the pale fox of Dogon tradition, who is charged with a similar role of judging between truth and error. The religious beliefs of the Dogon were first documented in studies conducted during the 30s, 40s, and 50s by French anthropologists Marcel Garel and Germain Deterlain. A very interesting aspect of Grael's observation of Dogon cosmology lies with the suggestion that the Dogon know subtle details of the star system of Sirius beyond what might be reasonably observed with the naked eye. These details include an understanding that Sirius is a binary star system composed of a large bright sun-like star Sirius A and a much smaller darker dense and heavy dwarf star Sirius B. Goral also reported that the Dogon are aware of the 50-year period of orbit of Sirius B and Sirius A, a value that the Dogon assign as the interval between ritual observances of an important festival called Sigi, as mentioned before. These attributes of the Sirius star system were confirmed by the modern scientific community in 1915, almost 40 years before they were reported by Goral in connection with the Dogon. Based on that fact, Carl Sagan proposed that the Dogon most likely learned these astronomical facts from some modern visitor and later chose to incorporate them into the body of myth they reported to Grael. Germain de Terlaine disagreed with Sagan's interpretation and defended the indigenous nature of the Dogon's serious information by producing a 400-year-old artifact illustrated by the Dogon people. There are other speculative aspects of Dogon cosmology that give the impression of a deeper relationship between Dogon myth and actual science. Goral says that the Dogon myths describe how the Dogon god, Ama, created the universe in matter. The Dogon conceive of the unformed universe as a kind of primordial ball that contained all of the potential seeds or signs of the future universe. This ball is referred to as Ama's egg as mentioned before, and Dogon artistic renderings of it 
take the same cone-like shape as the event horizon of a black hole in science. Stephen Hawking describes a black hole as an astronomical body that most closely resembles what the unformed universe may have looked like. Likewise, Dogon's descriptions of the formation of the universe from Ama's egg are distinctly reminiscent of the Big Bang theory in science. According to Dogon myth, some undefined impulse caused this ball to open, releasing a whirlwind that spun and scattered its contents all over the universe, ultimately forming all the galaxies of stars and planets. Dogon descriptions of the mythological structure of matter are similarly reminiscent of science. They begin with a primary unit of matter called the Po, which the Dogon define in terms similar to an atom. The Dogon priests say that all matter is created by the continuous addition of like elements beginning with the Po. Likewise, the Po is defined as comprising smaller subcomponents like seneseeds, whose mythological descriptions supposedly, according to some, sound much like the protons, neutrons, and electrons of modern science. According to Dogon belief, these seeds combine at the center of the Po and then surrounded by a crossing in all directions to form a nest. A Dogon cosmological drawing of this nest takes a shape that is very similar to one of the typical electron orbital paths inscribed by an electron as it circles the nucleus of an atom. Like modern quantum theory, the Dogon myths tell of the existence of more than 200 primordial particles described as seeds or signs that are said to exist as paired opposites. Like modern string theory or torsion theory, these particles are said to be the product of the vibrations of primordial threads. According to Dogon myth, each thread passes through a series of seven vibrations inside a tiny egg. These vibrations are characterized as seven rays of a star of increasing length. The Dogon myths say that this last ray grows long enough to pierce the egg, an event that constitutes the end of the original egg and the initiation of a new egg. Together, these eggs in series are said to form membranes, which the Dogon compare to the thin covering that surrounds the brain. The Dogon alternately characterize these seven rays by the spiral that can be drawn to inscribe their endpoints. This spiral can be said to be the tiny vortex that is proposed to exist in modern torsion theory. The Dogon myths also define a second thread of biological symbolism describing the formation of life from a fertilized egg, which can be seen to run parallel to actual biological science. The myths describe the hardening of an unfertilized egg that occurs at the moment of fertilization by a sperm and include descriptions of structures that resemble chromosomes and spindles and that seem to accurately describe key events that pertain to the division of a cell through the process of meiosis and mitosis. All in all, the Dogon seem to have orally recorded significant amounts of ancient African knowledge. Their culture not only preserves their own identity, but it also preserves invaluable scientific knowledge. The Dogon are no doubt one of the intellectual treasures of Africa. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, please consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Hey, hey.